Thank you for this last Sunday of August. Thank you for the testimony shared and unshared. Thank you for diverse healing, deliverance, and breakthrough, miracle children. Thank you, mighty God, for impact in the name of Jesus Christ. The God of heaven, you have come to seek this morning, will give you a testimony. Everywhere you have been rejected before now, they'll be looking for you to accept you. Where others fail, you will succeed. What they say is impossible with men, God will make possible in your life. This week, good news will come your way. This week, God will lift you beyond your measure. You shall be established. The testimony of the Lord will never cease in your mouth. In Jesus' glorious name. Hallelujah. Do you hear those testimonies today? 20 of them in this. As a matter of fact, before they pray, some others came while they were reading the testimony. So about 22 of them. Now, God has not left off without a witness. One of them, but where they stopped, but where they said, after the mantle service, just two Sundays ago, he took the mantle and tied on his head, but where they stopped from that day onward. Power past power. One of the Bible school students went and commanded Ren, stop. Ren said, I won't Ren again. So it's not only with pastor, it's with the pew. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Miracles. Escape from kidnappers. All manner of testimonies. Glory to God. To God alone be the glory. I will hear your own testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. Please put your beautiful hands together for Jesus, for Jesus. You may be seated and help me welcome your neighbor. Congratulations, welcome. This is your day. This is your day. This is your day. Hallelujah. I have dominion. Congratulations. This month, the word of God to us is financial fortune is my heritage. And we've been joining on the course, Gateways to Financial Fortune. We're going to conclude that teaching today in this service. We began the concluding aspect of it in the first service, part 3A. Please get the teaching of that. This part 3B will be the last on that and I believe God that financial fortune will become a daily occurrence in your life in Jesus glorious name hallelujah please come with me to Zechariah 1 I read 17 down to 21 Zechariah 1 17 to 21 this, remember, is our turnaround encounter service. It's also our favor for fortune service and our end of month Thanksgiving and dedication. Zechariah 1 from verse 17. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My city's true prosperity shall yet spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. Then lift then I up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be this? And he answered me, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four carpenters to match. Then said, Said I, What come this to do? And he spake, saying, These are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fret them, to stop them, to quench them, to cast out the horns of the Gentile, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Precious people of God, there is no spread without prosperity. There is no spread. The gospel cannot spread without prosperity. You say somebody says I hate it, it's because they don't understand. Prosperity is all about all round wellness. Fortune is all about being enriched in all things, having sufficiency of all things that we may abound unto every good work. There is no spread without prosperity. From the scripture we read, you discover that prosperity brings comfort. Say with me, I hear. 
and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. When the gospel begins to spread with prosperity, comfort comes. You will not lack comfort. Somebody say, I don't understand. Okay. How many of us know what they call moto? You know moto? You know moto? Moto is different from car. Do you know that? Yeah, because moto drives you. Can you compare moto to a brand new car? Yeah. When you enter the two, you know the meaning of comfort. And then, why this one? Before you close the door, you have to jam it. Boom, boom, boom. Oil is leaking. Tire is thumb. You'll be sweating inside. <laughs> The other one, everything we ease. Motor doesn't have power steering. You'll be driving it like trailer. You want to turn. <laughs> but you can use your one finger and drive a brand new car with power steering. Like this, you turn it, you just answer. Which one is better? You will never see evil in Jesus' name. God will give you comfort. If you are living in a house when they have old fan, you know old fan? I don't know those, all those kind of old fan, whether they still exist, but there are some old fan, you know that kind of old fan? It's there. And that's what you are using in the, in the room. You start it, you just do. You understand what I'm talking about? You can be under the fan and still be sweating. And then you are in your own house, correct house, because God will make you houses. Yeah. With AC, glory to God. You just put your, on the, with your comfort, you just put the AC with your remote, not uh, going to turn fan that will be cracking your head. You won't hear the noise of the AC, but you'll be getting the cooling effect. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Which one is better? See, when prosperity comes, comfort comes. Comfort will answer to you. Yeah. Fortune that brings comfort will come your way. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. But he said there are four horns that have scattered the people that have not allowed them to experience the turnaround. They desire the turnaround. They want to see this fortune. But there are four horns. One in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south. Four directional horns that have not allowed them. They put her there. They break it the down. They put her the other side. They, they want to expand. They crush them. Now hear me. I don't know who and any family here that the horns of Gentile have not allowed to leave their head. Today, I stand as a spiritual carpenter. And I command every horn of the Gentile that have not allowed you to experience fortune. That have been bringing misfortune your way. Those spiritual cobwebs, that spiritual wife, spiritual husband, that spiritual retardation that have been bringing misfortune. Whatever is good, when it's coming, it will be swept away. I stand here today, I crush every horn of Gentile that have lifted their head over you and your family. I move you from labor to favor in the name of Jesus. Receive the favor for fortune in the name of Jesus. From now, begin to enjoy turnaround encounters in the name of Jesus. Everything that will not allow you access to the comfort that prosperity brings, I command that thing to be shattered in the name of Jesus. From now, you will spread. Your business will spread. The gospel of Christ Jesus will spread through you. Why? Prosperity will come. Glory to God. All around awareness will come. Peace will come in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' glorious name. But if I must experience this turnaround, what must I do? We serve a God of turnaround and is still turning around destinies of men and women. Psalm 126, 1 to 4. He said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. There was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. They said they among themselves. They started sharing your testimony. Say them, the Lord has done great things for them. Whereof they are glad. The Lord has done great things for us. Your own sharing your testimony. Whereof we are glad. 
verse 4 said turn again save me turn again he has turned it before he can turn it again our God is the God of the second chance he's the God of again and again if you have turned it before he can turn it again if you have turned it for anyone before he can turn it for you my God will turn your captivity he will give you a turnaround testimony I want to preach and prophesy to someone here today that issue will turn to a testimony for you Job lost everything he had. The devil struck and he lost everything. But one day, Job prayed for his friends, Job 42, 10 to 12, and God turned again his captivity. And God gave them double what he had in the beginning. Now hear me. Somebody between now and December, if you have lost anything, you are going to get double. <laughs> This year will surely end well for you in the name of Jesus. Now, the beginning may be small, but your later end shall greatly increase. He said he will crown the year for you with his goodness and his path, your path will drop abundance of fatness. I don't know how the year began. It may not be as a one, but hear me, the year will end well for you. For though your beginning shall be small, he said your later end shall greatly increase. So expect increases. Expect great things in the name of Jesus Christ. Israel was in captivity for 430 years. As a matter of fact, a time came a Pharaoh that knew no Joseph arose. <laughs> May you never meet the Pharaoh that knew no Joseph. <laughs> and he said, let's deal wisely with the Israelites. Let's they become greater than us. As they afflicted the Israelites, the more they multiply. I don't know who been fighting you, but the more they try, the more you will expand. <laughs> and they said, let's do something now. Let's start increasing their level. Let, we, let them work with with rigor. The taskmaster in camp. Every taskmaster's tenure in your life is expiring. Yeah. And they increase their job. Their task. A time came, they decided, look, let them not even have many children. Any male child, you midwives, kill them before they know anything. That was the time Moses was even born. And he was a proper child. And the midwife decided to preserve him. But then because the midwives fear God <laughs> and refuse to kill those children, God made them houses. If God can make houses for people who are not born again, who feared him, how much more you that fear him and serve him day and night? God will make you houses. Yeah. But the truth of it is that a time came God heard their cry and God said, I have come down. I have done, done what? I have come down. When he came down, we didn't see God, we saw Moses. Whenever God wants to give you supernatural encounter, you may, you may not see God, you may see man. He will send somebody to you. By the same words you are hearing right now, God is already enacting some encounters for you. And the short of the story is this. In Exodus 12, 42, that same, same day, the host of the Lord went out of Egypt. The Bible said, it's, 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 it's a day to be much remembered. Now hear me. The days we are, that we are going into, God will remember you. Their, their 430 years labor was paid them in one day. They went out with silver and gold. Say with me, supernatural turn around. The God of heaven who stepped in and turned around the captivity of the Israelites will give you a supernatural turn around. Three nations besieged Judah, Jehoshaphat. Those were like three world powers that time coming against a tiny nation. They knew not what to do. Their eyes were on God. Second Chronicles 20, 3 to 14, you see that story. But when God gave them prescription and they appointed singers and they began to pray, just like we'll be praising today, God set ambushment against all their enemies. God set them free. There was a supernatural turnaround. Say that from 22, verse 22, Second Chronicles 20, 22 to 24. None of their enemies escaped. They destroyed themselves by themselves. 
Everyone that been fighting against you, secretly or openly, they will destroy themselves by themselves. But what do I do to experience this kind of turnaround? Anything God tells you to do, do it. It is when you do what God has told you to do that you are entitled to supernatural turnaround. You are entitled to your own turnaround packet. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and observe to do his commandment which I command you this day, say the Lord your God will set you on high above, above all the nations of the earth. These blessings will come upon you, verse 2, and overtake you. When you do what he commands, he sets you on high. He sets you on high. He sets you on high. That man that went and reached shall be in his house. He, 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 he delights in the commandment of the Lord. And his commandment, he takes heed to day and night. If he tells you to pray, you pray. If he says win souls, you win souls. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. The last breakthrough miracle Jesus did here in John 20, 5 to 6. Children, do you have any meat? They say no. He said, put your net to the right side. And when they did it, they include great multitude of fishes. Peter's breakthrough was by doing what Jesus said he should do. That man that was blind from birth, that Jesus saw and more than most and closed his eyes and said, go to Shiloh and wash. Nobody, he didn't, we didn't know how he went there, but he went to Shiloh and wash and came saying, John 9, 1 to 8. Anything he tells you to do, do it. There are some of you here, your turnaround testimony has not come because what God told you to do, you are still dragging your feet to do it. As I'm talking now, you know what I'm talking about. Go and do it and get your own miracle. Go and do it. Mary told them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do you desire a turnaround? How many of us desire a turnaround here? Please enter into a covenant to make serving God your priority for living. Enter into a covenant. Enter into a covenant. In a short while, I will show you the details of the covenant. Enter into a covenant to make serving God your priority for living. Second Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. Remember? Before this time, there was no peace, there was no joy, there was vexation of spirit. Nations were against nations. But in verse 12, they entered the covenant to serve God. Second Chronicles 15, verse 12. That anyone that will not serve God, whether man is small or big, it will be killed. And they all swore with an oath and entered the covenant to serve the Lord. And God gave them rest round about. Chapter 15. He gave them rest round about. Rest round about his prosperity, all round awareness. That is fortune, all round awareness. All round awareness. They experience a turnaround when they enter the covenant to serve the Lord. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours. Number two, keep loving God and continue to prove that you do. Keep loving God and continue to prove that you do. John 21, 15 to 17. Jesus asked Peter, Peter, son of God, love it, thou me. First time, second time, third time he got angry. Do you know I love you? Jesus said, go and feed my lamb. Go and feed the first time, feed my lamb, then the second one, feed my sheep. Please prove that you love God. How do you prove that you love God? John 14, 21. He that has my commandment and keep them is he that loveth me. And now you will love by my father who will come and make our abode in him, who will manifest in him. John 14, 21 and 23. So if you love him, you keep his commandment. If you are not keeping his commandment, you don't love him. And when you love him, the Bible says that you don't have limits. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. First Corinthians. 2 verse 9. Number 3, get committed to covenant of seed time and harvest as a lifetime for your desired financial turnaround. Get committed to it. In the first service today, we had one young man. He was giving, he was learning work, but he started paying widows, two widows, some stipend. When he finished work, he started giving them, he made it up to 13 people. Now, heavens are open for him. 
His brother got connection in talking. They give people you know, visas now and they've been successful. The last one he did now, but six of them, and he was blessed by it. Hear me and hear me well. God will connect you. But we committed to covenant or sit time and harvest time for your financial turnaround. Deuteronomy 8 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He that gave the power to make words. Remember Him. How do you remember Him? When He blesses you, you give Him His portion. Give the priest His portion. You give uh, the needy their portion. You give your father your portion. You keep spreading like that. He has this pass. He has given to the poor. <laughs> That's how well the riches come to His house. So you keep doing, you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. It's not once and for all. It's once. And again, you keep doing it, and then things will keep turning around for you. Keep will keep turning around for you. Hallelujah. Now, quickly, let's see the details of the covenant. How does the covenant work to deliver to us our desired turnaround? Please note that the covenant of God is attached to the ordinance of day and night. The covenant is our access to this fortune we are talking about. But the covenant of God is attached to the ordinance of night and day. Remember, the covenant is the reason behind the power to make words. Jeremiah 33, 20 to 21. Thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and the covenant of the night, And that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. That there should not that I should not have a son to reign over his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. So the covenant which is responsible for the power to make word is hinged on the ordinance of night and day. Which means if you see night this morning and see it's a busy day in the morning I see night in the night anytime that means the power to make what is working and covenant is working remember I told us last Sunday it's power to get it's not power to buy there are two different things power to get God will establish this power to get as you keep practicing the covenant in Jesus mighty name that's why anytime you are doing anything, you are giving to God, you are giving to the prophets of God, you are giving to the needy, you are giving to the church, it is not just a financial donation to help the church, to help God, to help the priest or the pastor, to help the needy. It is a spiritual transaction that brings blessings your way. If you understand this, nobody will encourage you to do it. Nobody will encourage you to do it. Nobody will encourage you to do it. Quickly now, what are the covenant terms of the covenant of financial fortune? What are the covenant terms? We have seen Titan, which is our financial, which is our key to financial fortune. Without Titan, the heavens will not open. The Titan is 10% of your income. And look, Leviticus 27 verse 30 says the tithe of the land is the Lord's. If you are in this land, God has created. Except you are not in this land. All the tithe is the Lord's. And it's holy to him. So don't eat the holy thing. How many of us have killed chicken before? How many of us have killed chicken? You have killed chicken here before? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Just raise your hand if you have killed chicken. I've killed before. Let's, okay, oh yeah, raise your hand. Chicken Killers Association. <laughs> now, if you are a professional like me, when you open the chicken, what do you go and remove first? Is the buy that green sack that is attached to the liver? You go and quietly cut it like this. Is it true? And put it to one side. Why? Eh? Huh? If he busts, the whole chicken will become bitter. Three of us. That vial is like your tights. It's okay. It's like your tights. He has given you the whole chicken, the whole hundred percent of the income. Cut the vial, the tight, and keep it. If you eat it with it, it will be bitter. Do you understand? If you eat it, it will be bitter. 
He said, let nothing be lost. Let all the fragrance be gathered. Let nothing be lost. You eat it with the bite. You will not enjoy the chicken, even though you pay with your money. That's how it is. When you eat your tight, you won't enjoy it. But when you remove the bite, you will enjoy the remaining part of the chicken. Three of us. Okay, next time, don't eat your tight. Mm. Some people hear you every time you get angry with Adam. You say, Adam, you are the one that caused our problem. You are the one that made us to suffer. Adam, why did you eat the forbidden fruit? But you have been eating the forbidden fruit every day. Do you know what Adam ate? What Adam ate was tight. It was tight. Okay, you don't know the forbidden fruit. He says, it's Adam's apple. <laughs> it's tight. Because God gave him all the feed, all the, all the, all the garden. He said, freely eat anything you want here. But this tree of life, don't touch it for me. Just like God has given you 90%. He said, this 10%, leave it holy for me. He said, who are you, God? Eh? You know, stealing, you hide and go and steal it. But robbery, skoro koro. God is there, you collect the tithe and eat it. He said, God, what can you do? If you touch me now, I'll shoot you. He <laughs> said, see this one. See this one. The same way that ate the forbidden fruit, you have been eating the forbidden fruit by eating your tithe. Say with me, I won't eat the forbidden fruit again. Uh -huh. If you have been eating your tithe, repent in Jesus' name. In heaven, Jesus received the tithe. Hebrews 7, 1 to 8 makes it clear. He received the tithe. But on the earth here, men receive it on his behalf. Please understand this spiritual transaction. It, Jesus is watching to know what you are doing with it. And if you don't want the devil to visit you, you visit, you pay your tithe. Abraham, as, as, as mighty as Abraham was, and as the father of the covenant, is what God swore the covenant with. God didn't swear it with you, he swore it with Abraham. But Abraham said, pay tithe to Mekizedek. To Mekizedek. And Mekizedek bless him. He bless him. And he bless. You know what they called him? Abraham of the Most High God. God became his son name. Abraham of the Most High God. When you are tighter and you are correctly paying it, God becomes your son name. Anything, you know, you are in a, in a treaty with him. You are in an alliance with him. Hear me. During the World War, you know, there are alliances. So it's okay. If you touch America, for instance, Britain will come up and fight you. That is how it is. When you are paying your tithe, anybody touch you, the devourer, Uncle Devon want to touch you, God will show up. If you try it, I will deal with you. Get to understand it. You are looking at me like this. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for the people who are repenting. Somebody said he started paying his tithe in the first service. And he now lost money. For the first time in his life, he lost money and recovered it. He said before, he's going, going, gone. But he lost money and recovered it. And he traced it to the tithe and the water baptism he received in church here. Glory to God. Somebody else said he started paying tithe and the heaven opened. And that's how it's supposed to be. Don't allow the devil to cheat you. Start doing it now. Start from where you are. Help me tell you about start from where you are. I told you here two Sundays ago, if you can't pay tithe of 100 naira from 1,000, you cannot pay tithe of 1 million from 10 million. Stop deceiving yourself and say, when it's big, I know God. God, you know that I'm a tighter. It's a lie. It's a lie. Remember also that giving towards kingdom advancement procures favor. So when you give towards kingdom advancement, you procure favor. And God of heaven will bless you. God will bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Something happened recently. A pastor send across to me a blessing. And I uh, prayed for him. And then, within hours, somebody gave him twice that amount. He said, Pastor, this thing is working. I said, that's how all of them work. It's the one you are not doing that is not working. Glory to God. Anyone you do will always work. God will make things work for you in Jesus' name. So, let's quickly see the channels through which we get our givings back as a blessing. When you give, God blesses you. Say, bring you all the tithes into my storehouse and prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out the blessing that your house will not be able to contain. 
So when you give, God doesn't give you money back directly. There are ways that God blesses you. In the first service, we saw the reign of divine ideas. Please get that teaching. We also saw the work of your hand. If you don't have what you are doing, God has nothing to bless you with. He said, whatever he doeth shall prosper. Whatever he doeth not, shall nothing will prosper. So give God address to bless you by giving him the work of your hand. Please get details of that in the first service. Because God said, in Deuteronomy 8 verse 12, he said, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give thee rain unto his land in season, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, they shall not blow. Uh, borrow. God blesses the work of your hand. If you don't have what you are doing for a living, God has nothing to bless. Before God bless Adam with wife, he bless him with work. Oh, young ladies, anybody come to you asking what is your occupation? What are you doing? If you say, I'm believing God, I know in short, anyway, you know, man has to I beg, share goodness with him in fellowship. However, if you can see he has a vision, maybe he has gone to school, he's looking for work or whatever, you know, uh, there's no, he can be patient. But if he start talking cock and boost with every time, you ask him, what can you do? Can you do this one? He jump like this. Can you do this one? He say, no. This one, that one, I bet run for your life. Except if you are ready to pay all the house bills, all the train, the children, and then be buying clothes for him free of charge, then he'll be happy with you. It's a nice catch. So, please have something you are doing. Have what? Something you are doing. Many people beg a lot. They beg and beg and beg. Stop begging. Stop the righteous don't beg. Just make up your mind I won't beg again. Don't teach your children to beg. One lady came to me, big phone. The phone was bigger than my own. Eyelash like this. I don't know. I asked her how much did she use to fix it? Maybe 5,000. To fix eyelash that is rubbish. Eh? And she was asking me for 2K, for TP. I said, Auntie, go say this phone. <laughs> it's past a weekend. Her phone was bigger than my own. Even to fix it. Oh, God. And he's not looking for TP. Help yourself. Some people have entered the wrong hands that way. Because, I mean, let's reason. Get something. There's nobody here who can do something. There's nobody. Even the disciples today do something. There's, there's one man here in this town I know. Eh? Ode. You know the, I think you know they hear. You know they you know the hear. Do you understand? I know they talk. But he knows how to repay you very well. Many of you know him very well. And he's now see a full fledged man. Full fledged man. Hand correct. Leg correct. Eye correct. Everything correct. Chest big. And he'll be begging you. God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Please stop begging. Now let's see, let's see two more and uh, we close from there. How does God bless us? What is the heaven return system? What is heaven's return system? Many people are giving, but they don't know how God blesses, so they miss it. And it shouldn't be so. It shouldn't be so. For giving, they don't have problem. They give to God, they give to the prophet, they give to the poor, they give to their parents, but they don't know how to receive from God. That will stop today in Jesus' name. Amen. So number one way God blesses us is through divine direction. Through what? Through what? Divine direction. That's why any price you will pay to know how to hear God is not a wasted price. Many people don't hear God. That's why they're losing. God will never lead you to lose. God will lead you to profit. Isaiah 48 verse 17. I am the Lord thy God that teaches you to profit. That leadeth you in the way that thou shouldest go. God leads us to profit. Anytime you experience loss, God wasn't there. You had yourself. God can lead you to do a business. That you will lose. God can't lead you way forward. If for one night people catch you, it's because you too you are greedy. Somebody come to tell you uh, that they will give you something now, you will wash money that will feed the whole house. Or that uh, if you just invest in this thing now, uh, under 10 days, uh, you will give you this house, you will give you this. 
Naturally speaking, sir, if anybody find a good way, he will not look for a stranger. He will look for his brother and his sister. You that he doesn't know from Adam, that's why you want to give this kind of opportunity. That should, something should tell you that this is fake. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's fake. But moreover, ask God. Any proposal that they brought to you, ask God, should die or should die not? And peace of mind is one of the ways God answers you whether you should go ahead or not. Peace of mind. Psalm 85 verse 8. I will hear what God will say to his people. He will speak peace to his people, but let them not return again to their folly. Peace of mind. God told Abraham, leave your father's house. At 75 years, leave your father's house to a place I will show you. And Abraham left. And that was chapter 12, 1 to 3. In chapter 13, Abraham became rich in gold and silver. By following God's lady. There was famine in the land. In Genesis 26. Isaac wanted to check out. Like Andrew. God said stay here. I will establish the oath that swore to your father. It wasn't the property of Abraham that made Isaac rich. It was the covenant of Abraham that made him rich. Stay here. I will direct you. I will show you what to do. And he stayed. God began to show him how to do irrigation farming. He started with the game business. <laughs> Whoa, business. And he was farming and watering it. And again, in the same land, he reaped hundredfold. Others were crying the land was dry, but he reaped hundredfold. He went forward. He became great. He was strong. He has store of Saba to the end that Philistines envied him. A whole nation envied one man. But how did they start? By direction. Pressure people of God more than ever before. Before you step up, before you do anything, ask God for direction. God, do you, are you in this thing? You don't want me to do this. I read a book sometime by Stanley Tam. God owns my business. This man was into steel business. He, he, he was paying almost 90% of his tithe to God. You know, this man never lost a business one day. You know why? He said before any business transaction, he will go to God to ask, should I or should I not? And God will lead him. He never lost one dime. But today, what do we have? We are in the mid age, instant model age. Everything is fast, back, 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 back. Nobody wants to check it out with God. If you don't check it out with God, you'll be checked out. Please create time to ask God, should I or should I not? And if He doesn't give you an answer, don't step out. Did somebody hear that? Through divine direction, God blesses us. He can show you what to do, He can show you what to buy. There are some of you now, God has shown you to go and buy land somewhere, you refuse. And somebody bought it, and then they hear that they're selling it so so amount. They start crying. Hey, something told me. Oh, they be sending to go and hire a shop somewhere, or whatever. Follow the direction. Whatever He shows you, whatever He tells you, the Holy Spirit is the showing spirit. Whatever He shows you, whatever He tells you, follow it. You always profit from it. Say with me, I hear. Number two way. That God blesses you, blesses us, is through the reign of divine favor. The reign of what? The reign of what? Yes. But you see, favor is entreated. Favor is what? Favor does not just jump on people. Favor is entreated. You must sow seeds of favor for you to receive favor. You must sow seeds of favor. Psalm 45 verse 12. He said, the daughters of Thea will entreat thy favor. Favor is entreated. You sow seed of favor. He that diligently seeketh good will find favor. He that showeth mercy on people will find favor. Don't be a wicked person. Don't be hard on people. Sow seeds of favor. Your brother is doing them, he won't go. You want them to come to your own. It won't happen. Seeds of favor. Seeds of kindness. All your life, you have never given anybody what to eat or what to drink or what to wear, and you're expecting it. It may not happen. One day when we were in school, I don't used to write letters, and people were receiving letters in school. This is something that happened to me. People, every time they go to post office, that time of post office, they say they brought a letter for this person. I don't write, I don't write. And they were receiving letters. I was like, ah, ah, why if nobody knows they write me? God reminded me, who have you written? So I've not written to anybody, so you will get, you will get a reply. If you are not a giver, people will not give to you. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, shall men give to you. Psalm 102, 13 to 15. Thou shalt arise 
can have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the same time has come. Why will God arise to favor Zion? He said, Because the sons and the daughters favor the doors thereof. They favor the doors thereof. So if you don't favor the kingdom of God, God will not in turn favor you. And it is by the favor of God that your mountain will stand out. You can't stand out outside the favor of God. As the mother of God, the Bible said, in his favor is life. The limit of your life is, 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 is to the extent of the favor of God you enjoy. Psalm 30 verse 5. <laughs> his anger is done for a moment, but his favor is life. Sorrow may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In verse 7, he said, By your favor, you will make my mountain to stand strong or to stand out. You can't be outstanding without the favor of God. I've told us here before, there are two ways God blesses us. God can bless you either by restoration, which has to do with mercy, takes care of your past. God can bless you by grace or by, by favor, which takes care of your present and by your future. Anytime you pray, whatever you do, those are the two ways God will bless you. And each one has its own time. Will you at this time restore the kingdom back to Israel? Acts 1 6. And then this the time to favor Zion has come. Yeah, the said time has come. So there's only the time of favor, there's a time of restoration. But favor is provoked. Favor doesn't just happen. Think about yourself. Have you ever favored anybody before? Sometimes something provokes you to favor people. True or false? Is it true? Is everybody you just see and start favoring them? Is anybody in the streets and start favoring them? Something provokes you to favor them. Maybe they've done one kind of good or kindness to you. You call them, okay, come now. I want to honor you. I want to bless you. The same way with God. If you want God to favor you, then you entreat God with favor. You do kindness to people. You sow seeds of favor. And favor will naturally come back to you. Favor will naturally come back to you. Moreover, favor can be imparted. If you see a person who carries favor, the person can impart you with the spirit of favor. And I pray for you. May someone that has favor lead you. <laughs> Our bishop prayed that prayer in 1998. If the person that carries favor leads you, you will enjoy the favor the person carries. Glory to God. I pray for you again. May you encounter people with favor. And may you be favored in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, for all any time you sow your seeds to God, all the thing the thing does when it's acceptable, you know, sweet smelling savour comes. God provoked to release upon you the blessing. When Noah gave God a sweet smelling savour, grace came upon him, and God removed the curse on the ground for his sake. That is favor. That is favor. That is favor. And no one found grace in the sight of God. That is favor. I pray for someone here. The God that remember no one will remember you. For every seed you have been sowing in the kingdom, sowing in the life of prophets, sowing in the life of people, I command favor to begin to answer to you. People will give to you to in the name of Jesus. Favor of God will begin to answer in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today, no day of your life will go without you being favored. Yeah. Some of us have scratched it. It can happen to you. There is no day I'm not favored. Ask the devil. Ask God. There is no day. The same favor I release to you. The favor that makes things to happen. The favor that makes you to get. I command it to be released to you. Yeah. The favor that makes for fortune. I command it to be released to you. The favor that made for turn around, I command it to be released to you. Do you understand that favor can make you have turn around? Ask Peter when you see him. There were other fishermen who had their boats. They had their boats in the, in the river. Jesus came. He selected Peter's own. Now, that is favor. That is what? That is what? Now think about it too. If Peter refused to give Jesus, he could have also missed what will come out of it. But after preaching with Peter's boat, are you ready to give Jesus your boat? Are you ready to give Jesus your boat? Then get ready for favor for fortune, favor for turnaround. Now, after Peter used 
Jesus finished using the boat. He asked Peter, what happened? I didn't see you with fish. You're a fisherman. Peter said, we toiled all the night. We didn't catch anything. He said, relax. This is your misfortune. I will turn it to fortune now. Carry your net. Lower it into the deep for a drought. And all the fishes came for census. Peter had a net-breaking harvest. People gathering breakthrough. Everybody was now celebrating Peter. Why? Jesus had turned his misfortune to fortune by favor. But look at where he started. He gave Jesus his boat first. So favor is entreated. When you give Jesus your boat first, he can turn your financial captivity. He can turn your misfortune to fortune. Someone here will be that testimony in the name of Jesus. I command supernatural turnaround for you. Receive the favor for fortune in the name of Jesus. Rise on your feet this morning. Hallelujah. We must go home this morning. Now, before we go ahead to pray, I want to give opportunity to everyone here that is not born again. Now hear me. Until you are a member of a family, you are not entitled to the inheritance that is shared in that family. Acts 20.32 I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. There's an inheritance for those that are sanctified. And what you are sanctified, you cannot get that inheritance. And it's only salvation, redemption by Christ Jesus that makes you to qualify for such. Somebody is here today who wants to say, I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a member of this household of God so that I can qualify for the blessings thereof. Put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is here. You're also struggling because you gave your life to Jesus someday. Between you and God, you don't feel God again. There's no more there. No joy, no peace. You, everything has gone haywire. Why will you continue that way? Why not return back to him? Let him return to you. When the prodigal son returned, he just glory and dignity. Somebody is saying, I'm returning back to my father. I'm returning home. I don't want to run away again. Now, put your hand on your chest also and pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody is struggling with certain evil habits. You know it. You drink. You smoke, you bet, you do a manner of things and you know that this thing is not giving you peace, not giving you joy you have tried to do new resolution, new resolution didn't help you, why not turn to Jesus, let him help you, why not run to Jesus sincerely from your heart, he loves you the way you are, come also to him the way you are, with sincerity of heart he can deliver you, he can set you free, if you are among this category of people I've mentioned, put your hand on your chest and pray this prayer of salvation with me, say Lord Jesus come into my heart be my Lord, be my Savior. From my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, write my name in the book of life. I return to you, return to me. Thank you for accepting me. I am a child of God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' glorious name. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, wave your hand to Jesus. You pray that prayer with me.